What is going on guys? The NFL Combine gives all draft prospects the ideal opportunity to shine and increase their stock ahead of the big day. Any prospect who aced the Combine certainly walked away with one of the most satisfying feelings in their young lives. But these 10 guys will tell you that dominating the Combine doesn't always necessarily guarantee a successful NFL career. Here are 10 NFL draft busts who dominated the Combine. Number 10, Steven Paya. The Oregon State product was one of the most hyped up defensive prospects in recent memory entering the 2011 draft. His incredible performance at the NFL Combine only increased Paya's draft stock. Paya, a two-time Morris Trophy winner and 2010 Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, displayed superhuman-like strength when he recorded 49 bench press reps at 225 pounds. The Chicago Bears took note of that, and Paya was drafted in the second round, 53rd overall. Unfortunately, the 6'1", 306-pound Paya wasn't able to reach the same levels of success at the NFL level. He showed signs of breaking out in 2014 after logging six sacks and two forced fumbles, but it turned out to be nothing more than one fluke year. Paya also played one season each for the Washington Redskins, Cleveland Browns, and Dallas Cowboys, but he never played again after 2017. Paya finished his career with only 14 total sacks, 129 combined tackles, and three forced fumbles. Number 9, Tim Tebow. He was one of the most dominant highlight reel sensations during his tenure with the Florida Gators. Tebow led the team to a pair of national championships while capturing two Maxwell Awards plus the 2007 Heisman Trophy. Of course, there were questions about how Tebow would fare at the NFL level. His style of play was perfect suited for college ball. But would this run-first signal caller really last at the professional level? The scouts were skeptical, while Tebow added to his draft value with a tremendous showing at the 2010 Combine. Running a 4.7140 yard dash while registering a 38.5 inch vertical jump and 115 inch broad jump. Simply put, it was one of the best NFL Combine performances by a quarterback in history. The Denver Broncos head coach Josh McDaniels loved everything he saw in Tebow, so they drafted him 25th overall in 2010. He only made Made three starts in his rookie season, but Tebow finally had his shining moment during the 2011 season. With Kyle Orton struggling, then head coach John Fox turned to Tebow, who won seven of 11 starts, including a whopping five improbable come from behind victories. The Broncos finished eight and eight to win the AFC West division. After shocking the defending AFC championship Pittsburgh Steelers in the wildcard round, Tebow mania ended at the hands of the New England Patriots in the divisional round. Unfortunately, Tebow never got the chance to repeat his magic. The Broncos won the Peyton Manning free agency sweepstakes in 2012, while Tebow was traded to the New York Jets, where he played behind Mark Sanchez. Tebow had brief stints with the Patriots and Philadelphia Eagles, but never played a regular season snap after his 2012 tenure with the Jets. He has since embarked on a minor league baseball career for the New York Mets, and I can tell you that it's not really going too well. He hit like a home run. Number eight, Matt Jones. The Arkansas pass catcher saw his draft value rise after a great A showing at the 2005 NFL Combine. He ran a 40-yard dash in just 4.37 seconds to go with a 39.5-inch vertical jump. Jones also posted a 129-inch broad jump, and only eight participants recorded a better score. The Jacksonville Jaguars drafted Jones 21st overall in 2005. And though he displayed plenty of on-the-field talent, his off-the-field behavior ruined a promising career. Jones semi-broke out in 2008 with 65 receptions for 761 yards and two touchdowns. However, he was suspended mid-season for violating the NFL's wellness policy. In the 2009 offseason, he was arrested for violating probation, stemming from a 2008 arrest after he and a friend were busted by police for driving with cocaine in their vehicle. The Jaguars had no choice but to release Young and the talented Jones, and he never played in the NFL again. Number 7, Fabian Washington. As good as Matt Jones was at the 2005 NFL Combine, Washington was even better. The Nebraska cornerback finished with the third fastest 40-yard time of 4.29, just two one-hundredths of a second behind Stanford Routes Combine best time time of 4.27. Only seven guys had a better vertical jump than Washington, who leaped 41.5 inches. He also had a 129 inch broad jump, which also placed Washington among the combine leaders. And finally, Washington had a 3.91 20 yard shuttle drill time. Only 11 guys recorded a faster time than that. Washington was infamously drafted 23rd overall by the Oakland Raiders in 2005. The next pick was none other than Aaron Rodgers, My knee. who fell to the Green Bay Packers at 24. Washington only lasted six seasons in the NFL, playing three Three each with the Raiders and Baltimore Ravens. He didn't come anywhere close to living up to expectations after such a prominent showing at the Combine. Number 6, Broderick Bunkley. The Florida State defensive tackle didn't exactly impress 
with his 40 yard dash time of 5.01. But other than that, he was out of this world. It was hard to not be somewhat impressed by his 32.5 inch vertical jump and his 113 inch broad jump, given his six foot three, 306 pound frame. Holy shit! Bunkley turned heads, however, when he recorded 44 bench press reps. Only Mike Kudla had more with 45. He was drafted 14th overall by the Philadelphia Eagles in 2006, but Bunkley wasn't able to grow into a star that many had envisioned. Bunkley never tallied more than three sacks in a season, and he only had 8.5 total sacks in his career. Stops with the Broncos and New Orleans Saints didn't do anything to revive his career, and Bunkley was out of the league after eight largely unproductive seasons. Number five, Vernon Golston. The Ohio State defensive end figured to be a top 10 selection for the 2008 draft. After his performance at the Combine, there was no second guessing it. He was going to be one of the first defensive players taken off the board. The six foot three, 266 pound Golston ran a 4.65 40 yard dash, and he recorded a 35.5 inch vertical jump to go along with a 125 inch broad jump. He and Jay Galong also shared the lead for most 225 pound bench press reps with 35 apiece. The New York Jets drafted Golston sixth overall in 2008, and he was expected to be a perennial Pro Bowl talent on that defense. But for whatever reason, he was not able to deliver on the NFL stage. Even defensive guru Rex Ryan couldn't get the most out of him. Golston lasted just three seasons in the NFL, recording zero sacks and only 42 combined tackles before exiting the league following the 2010 campaign. Number four, Robert Griffin III. Heading into the 2012 draft, Andrew Luck and Robert Griffin III were the easy choices to be the top two selections. Luck was always considered the better quarterback, but RG3 certainly gave the Indianapolis Colts a lot to think about before the draft. The signal caller was coming off one of the greatest quarterback seasons in NCAA history, having won the 2011 Heisman plus the Davey O'Brien and Manning Awards. Now he had just one more chance to place himself ahead of Luck at the 2012 NFL Combine. RG3 displayed his game-breaking speed with a 40-yard dash time of 4.33 seconds. Why are you running? Why are you running? Which placed him in a tie for third fastest among all combine participants. How often do quarterbacks rank that high in the 40 yard dash? Yeah, not really often at all. Griffin also posted a 39 inch vertical jump. Only eight guys topped that number. And with that, he cemented himself as a top two selection, in case there was any doubt. The Colts ultimately took luck first overall, while the Washington Redskins sent the St. Louis Rams a bundle of picks to move up to the number two spot where they took Griffin. Griffin had a rookie season for the ages, tossing 20 touchdowns against just five and interceptions while racking up 815 rushing yards and seven rushing touchdowns. He won the Offensive Rookie of the Year award after leading Washington to a surprise NFC East division title. But sadly, as we all know, the dysfunctional Washington organization had RG3 play through a serious knee injury, which derailed his career completely. He was hit hard by the sophomore slump in 2013, and Griffin played just nine games in 2014. After choosing Kirk Cousins as their long-term starter, RG3 was released in 2016. He has since taken up a backup gig, playing with Cleveland in 2016 before signing with the Baltimore Ravens in 2018. Number three, Tony Mandarich. The Michigan State product was hyped up as the greatest offensive lineman prospect ever by Sports Illustrated. And for good reason. Mandarich was a 1988 consensus All-American while earning back-to-back -back Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year awards in 1987 and 88. Mandarich was part of the Dream 1989 class that saw four future Hall of Famers in Troy Aikman, Barry Sanders, Derek Thomas, and Deion Sanders all get taken in the top five. But Mandarich was able to separate himself from most of the pack after a superb performance at the combine. It was nothing short of freakish for a man who's six foot six and over 300 pounds. He ran an eye-popping 4.65 second 40 yard dash, which by the way, is also kind of good for an offensive lineman of Mandarich's size. He recorded a jaw-dropping 39 bench press reps of 225 pounds. His broad jump measured at 10 feet, three inches and had a 30 inch vertical jump. What more could the scouts have wanted? This generational prospect exceeded expectations at the combine. The Green Bay Packers passed on the to Sanders and Thomas, taking Mandarich with the second overall pick. They unfortunately lived to regret it. Mandarich engaged in a contract holdout that was only resolved days before the season began. He was also quoted saying, I'm not like other players. I am Tony Mandarich. Well, Mandarich never came close to living up to the hype, and the Packers released him in 1992 following three lackluster seasons. Number two, Mike Mamula. The Boston College product had by far the greatest combine showing in NFL history back in 1995. He was supposed to be a second or third round draft choice, but Mamula's 
historic performance of the combine changed all of that. His 40 yard dash time clocked at 4.58, which was basically unheard of for linebackers and defensive ends. He had 28 bench press reps plus a 38.5 inch vertical jump. It was absolutely astonishing to see someone, especially a not so hyped up prospect, make such easy work at the combine. Well, he claimed that he had practiced the drills hundreds of times beforehand. And so after that legendary combine performance, he saw his draft value skyrocket and the Eagles drafted him seventh overall. Unfortunately for the Eagles, he turned out to be a guy that shouldn't have been taken in the first round just because of his performance at the combine. He played just five NFL seasons, all for the Eagles, and he finished his career with 31.5 sacks, 209 combined tackles, and eight forced fumbles. Not exactly good enough for a top 10 draft selection. Maybe his NFL career didn't go as expected, but here we are three decades later, and we're still talking about his combine performance. He totally revolutionized the way that players prepare for the event. How many NFL players can say that? Number one, Darius Hayward Bay. There was little doubt that the Maryland wide receiver would go in the first round, but certainly he wasn't expected to be a top 10 selection. That all changed, however, thanks to one of the most impressive combine outings ever. Hayward Bay ran a lightning fast 4.30 40-yard dash, which was tied for the best time among all participants. Hayward Bay also had a 38.5-inch vertical jump and a 126-inch broad jump. On top of that, Hayward Bay posted an excellent 20-yard shuttle time of 4.18. It's hard to think of many better combine performances from a wide receiver. Compared to what we saw from Hayward Bay in 2009, following that effort, the Oakland Raiders went off the board and took Hayward Bay 7th overall in 2009. Hayward Bay had one impressive season in 2011, when he caught 64 receptions for 975 yards and 4 touchdowns. But with no great quarterbacks to work with, Hayward Bay's skills were basically wasted by the Raiders. A one-year stop with the Indianapolis Colts, plus a five-year tenure with the Pittsburgh Steelers, didn't amount to much. Hayward Bay was basically a number three receiver during his decade-long career, which is quite surprising when you remember how much he impressed at the combine. What other NFL draft bus dominated at the combine? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, we're on everything. Go find us. Every social media you can think of, we're on it. Go find us. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Every day's a new video. Subscribe. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.